So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to stop the products button in the store page from auto adding into the cart. And instead, we're going to replace it with a button that'll redirect to the actual products page. It's very easy to do. We're gonna be using our own custom code. We're not gonna be using an external plugin for this. So let's get started. So in the back end of our website, we're gonna go into the theme editor and we're going to put our custom code inside the functions file of the theme. If you're like me, you'd rather put this code into a custom plugin, then you can still use the same code, just put in a plugin instead of the theme function file. So let's head over to appearance, theme file editor. Once we're in the theme file editor, then we're gonna select the actual functions file. So don't forget to do that. Then we head over to the theme functions file. If you don't see the name of theme function, then the functions file is going to be called functions.php. So now that we're in the file, we head right to the bottom and we don't interfere with the rest of the code that's inside this file. After the last function, we just make some space and here we're gonna add our custom code. Let's start to add a little note just to say what this function is about so we remember it for later. So the note that I put in there is this function replaces the store product button with our own. And that's in essence what we really are going to be doing. We are going to be making our own button there because the old WooCommerce one is a trigger to do add to cart and with ours we're actually going to make our button and have it link to the product page. So let's start by giving this function a name. So I'm calling my function my custom store page product button with the open and close brackets and then the open and close brace. Please do make sure that your function name is very unique so it doesn't interfere with anything else in your website. Now before we carry on with the code in this function, we need to bring in a couple of variables. So inside the bracket of our function name, let's get those two variables. So the two variables that we're bringing in is the button and then the product that it's associated with. So now we can carry on with our function code. So inside this function, we're going to do a sanity check just to make sure that this is being called within the store page or inside a product category page. In order to do that, then we have to say if is product category open close brackets or is shop open close brackets and then we close the if bracket then we open up a brace so what that's saying is like if this is definitely being called inside the shop or the category page then carry on and use the code that's inside so the first thing we're going to do when we construct our button is to give the text of the button so in order to do that we're going to have a variable called button text so just remember that your variables have to start with a dollar because this is how php works and we say it's equal to double underscore open brackets view product within quotation marks comma and then the trigger is going to be woocommerce which is also in quotation marks and then we can close off our variable now the second thing we're going to be using is the button link for the product so in order to get that product link we have to use the action called get permalink so let's do that now quickly within our code so here we say the button link is equal to the product get permalink and then woocommerce will give us the permalink for our product that we're going to be using here so now that we have the text and we have the link to our button let's create our button for the product the first thing we have to do in constructing our button is we have to put the link first and then we're going to put the text of the button now it sounds complicated it's actually very easy to do so if you feel it's a bit complicated just pause the video and then copy exactly what i have written down highlighted here and then you should be fine so just pay attention to double quotes and the single quotes when you're copying it so now that you've copied the button code that I've put over here, don't worry, I'm going to put this into the description of the video so you can just copy paste in case you get lost. Because I do understand for a new person, it might be tricky with the double quotation marks and the single quotation marks and the full stops. But they're all there for a reason. So now we've constructed our button. Now we have to give the button to WooCommerce to use for the product. So now we say return button and this gives the button that we've constructed back to WooCommerce to use for that product instead of its default action. So now we have our function. Now we're going to call the filter that's going to be using this function for us. So now we say add filter. So the filter we're going to be using is the WooCommerce loop add to cart link. And then the second variable we're going to be passing through the filter is going to be our function name. And then we're going to add with the importance of 10 and 2. So now that we've done it, now we're just going to save our file and then you'll see in the store front end, it'll go to the single product page. So now that it's saved, let's head over to our front end and now we're going to hit refresh. So now that the store is loaded, now you can see it says view product and it's behaving just like it did before. So what's happening there is there's the text that we said of view product and it's behaving like a button to the class that we actually constructed inside the button. So now if we actually click on view product, it'll take us to our own product page. And there we go, working perfectly. So from now on, when a client clicks on the product in the store page, it'll actually go to the product page instead of doing add to cart. Now I understand that that code was slightly tricky to someone who doesn't know how to code. That's why I'm putting it into the description below. But once you get a basic understanding, that code isn't actually so scary. I hope you enjoyed that and you found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And please comment down below if you want me to do a video on something. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.